it's a scary world. And speaking of scary stuff, okay, let's move on to. I mean, have you have you given much thought to? Have you written about porn? Yeah, yes, <laughs> I deep, have. I have. Deep fake can that get rid of the? I mean, I, I guess it's a, a parallel uh, discussion to what we were talking about with YouTubers, uh, except they take their clothes off. That's that's the major difference. Uh, and is there that desire for pe- people with with pornography for? Uh, deep fake people or will they want that authenticity and you know so the entire story starts with porn oh it always does doesn't it it always does porn is always the pioneering use case Hmm. and that's where my story with ai starts as well oh yes uh i'll explain um i used to work so i used to work in geopolitics and i used to like work on various different political campaigns i've worked with various different political leaders but the kind of most interesting trend of my career uh, was how technology is becoming this macro force and is disrupting the world, both at the level of very high level kind of states craft, but also in how quickly it's changing the collective human experience. And I experienced this personally as well because I'm half Nepalese. My mother grew up in you know a tiny village in the Himalayas in the 1960s. And within a generation, I mean, when she grew up, Nepal was completely closed off from the rest of the world. Uh, they lived in the same way they had lived for hundreds of years as kind of subsistence farmers. And in the space of one generation, you know, the country has completely changed because of access to information, the internet, modern technology, computing. So my experience has been so different from that of my mother. So that, again, touches on this point I was talking about exponential technology. And that curve is going to be even steeper in our lifetime mm. for for those of us who have kids. Um, so I was just interested in exponential technology and how quickly the world was changing. And in 2017, um, I had been working on things relating to election integrity, declining trust in democracies, declining trust in the electoral process. Um, and I saw this stuff happening online at the end of 2017 on Reddit. And what was it? It was deep fake pornography. Because when AI's capabilities started emerging over the past five, six years, including now what's become known as generative AI, so the ability to actually create content, and it started leaking out of the research community, right, these advances, mm. what was the first thing that early enthusiasts did with those capabilities? Yeah, make it people. Yeah, they made porn, right? So... Just like with the genesis of the internet itself. And I immediately recognized that this is seismic, right? First of all, these capabilities are far beyond anything we've seen before. Second of all, oh my God, you can clone somebody's biometrics. Because again, coming back to my point about data, it's all about the training data. And if the training data is your biometrics, then I can synthesize you. So I immediately understood that it's more than just some kind of tawdry women's issue. This is a civil liberties issue. This is an information integrity issue. This is about content creation, synthetic content creation at scale. But as I started going into it, I mean, I was thinking primarily about it from a mis- and disinformation information integrity perspective, because that's what I had been working on until that point. Um, I realized there's way more than that, because that was just the very first manifestation of something much more profound. And that is the seismic step change, the coming intelligence revolution where Mm -hmm. machines that are trained on so much data can do anything we assumed was unique to human creativity or intelligence, whether that's content creation, whether that's video as a piece of software, whether that's being able to diagnose diseases. So at that point, I started working not with policymakers and politicians because I was also pretty frustrated at how bureaucratic and slow moving that is, but working with technologists, right? right, Who are at the cutting edge of this. But it starts with porn and oh my God, are there gonna be some, that whole area is just so fascinating. You know, the area of research where love, sex and relationships, because um, it's also pretty disturbing. I mean, one of deep fake porn is super malicious, for instance, because it's only targeted against women, almost universally against women. As in brutal? No, you don't see defake porn of men. Oh, I see. It's women. Oh, okay, sorry. You, you mean as like an attack where they make a real person? I guess I was thinking it was of like not, an entirely yeah. 
So it's like non-consensual. So in yeah. the first use case, it's non-consensual porn universally made of women. Celebrities right? and yeah. things. Okay. And not only celebrities. You think, oh, celebrities. And there were lots of celebrities, but normal women as well. Hmm. Because, and there's a really, my my friend Henry Asia, who's like a, a fellow AI researcher, deepfake researcher, did a really pioneering study a few years ago now where he was like looking on... Um, uh, was it basically one of the social networks? I forget which one, but found like huge swathes of deep fake porn of minors, of children. Okay, so that, yeah, that so, was going to be my next question actually, because that's that's probably the most controversial question you can you can ask really is, and, and people ask this: is that better to have like not real children, completely faked ones for those people right. with that? You know, or is that a, uh, what's the word, a, a gateway drug? You know, so some people say it's a substitution for those people mm -hmm. uh, and it's a disgusting like, thought. Yeah. And some say, oh no, that would be a gateway drug. They would watch those deep fakes of fake children and that would move them onto real children. Yeah, I mean, I would always argue that, you know, even synthetic porn of minors is, it's not acceptable. Yeah. I'm putting my foot down here and be yeah. like, nope. I don't, I don't think that's a controversial uh, stance. Yeah, like, nope. I don't, I don't think it's something I, that I, I don't think us... it's better. It's uh, because also, first of all, the training data has to come from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, there's also questions of getting again to this information integrity, right? What's synthetic? What's authentic? You know. Uh, oh, so there's no way to actually. They would always be. It would be based on off of real. The only way you can tell, yeah. So, so right now, and this is this this debate is already playing out with adult performers, where you have seen porn stars created who are entirely synthetic, mm -hmm. right? And and there is a market for that, I'm sure, because yeah. you'll be able to talking about immersive content experiences in 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 gaming or with extent, you know, immersive IP building. And I gave the example of Harry Potter. There's no no a uh, reason you wouldn't do that in porn, and I'm sure that's already kind of happening, right? Sure. Where you have like these immersive, immersive synthetic experiences, either with completely synthetic performers or with a synthetic version of a performer you like. But there's already been questions about the training data, right? So to do that, you need a data set, which includes lots and lots of videos of authentic performers. Now, was that data set taken with their consent or not? You know, is there mm -hmm. a copyright issue? And you, that copyright issue and the training data issue is already playing out in the courts, not in the context of porn specifically, but just in the broader context of these foundational models. There's a couple of cases, class action lawsuits winding their way through the US courts where people are saying, you know, my data was taken without my consent. But I imagine if you're a very commercially minded adult performer, this is the same analogy I was making to what you could do as, as yep. a, a YouTube presence, is you would probably synthesize your persona, you know, and you wouldn't even need to perform, right? Yeah. So ev your fans can have experiences with you, content experiences with you that are completely personalized to what they want to experience. Um, and uh, you would license that. Man, this is a crazy world. But obviously, into. when it comes to minors, n that, you know, yeah. absolutely not. Because thinking about the training data, also thinking about how this can be abused in the sense of uh, the arguments around, well, this is synthetic, this is authentic. Like, no, absolutely not.